Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show today is new anti-scab legislation, good or bad for the economy. And more than anything else, we need the economy to grow. So what is the best path to expansion? Plus, Alberta throws a wrench in the federal plans to lower emissions. That's all ahead. First, for the week that was in business, it's time for the briefs. A closely watched read on jobs in Canada showed another weak read, with fewer jobs added to the economy than the labour force grew. That sent unemployment ticking higher to 5.8%. The government's own projections in the recent fiscal update suggest it could hit 6% in the months ahead. The economy was also softer in the three months ending in September. GDP fell another 1.1%. Early estimates suggest some growth in September and October, however. And thanks to a revision higher to second quarter growth, Canada has so far avoided a recession, which would be two consecutive quarters of shrinking economic activity. Consumer confidence is at a record low in Canada, the third lowest reading in 60 years for November. That's according to the Conference Board of Canada's survey. The deeply pessimistic view includes the weakest enthusiasm for big purchases since 2002. Online sales for Shopify merchants racked up a record $9.3 billion over the Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend, an increase of 24% from year-ago levels, so even accounting for inflation, it's a healthy jump in consumer spending on holiday purchases. Recent retail sales data pointed to a slowdown in spending after gasoline sales were taken out of the mix. It was a turbulent week for Canada's biggest banks as the biggest reported their quarterly results. The focus was on how much they're setting aside for bad loans as an overstretched consumer faces mortgage renewals in the months ahead. TD Bank also announced 3,000 layoffs as the banks all work to cut costs. Flight attendants at Air Transat have set January 3rd as a possible strike date if a new labor agreement isn't met. The date is likely to scare off some holiday travelers who don't relish the idea of being left hanging even if they are somewhere warm when it happens. If the 2100 crew end up on strike, all flights would be canceled, according to the union. Google has struck a deal with the federal government that will keep news sources on its sites in Canada. The agreement comes in the wake of Bill C-18 and includes payments to news companies here totaling about $100 million. Facebook and Instagram parent Meta has already blocked Canadian news on its sites. Details of the agreement and how it will be divided are still forthcoming. And those are your business briefs. A long-promised policy has been put in place by the federal government with the passage of Bill C-58, which prohibits replacement workers during a contract dispute in any federally regulated industry. Well, that includes banking, telecom, and, of course, government itself. Ravi Malhotra is a professor of law at the University of Ottawa. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So this has been hailed as a big victory for workers. Presumably it will make a big difference in union negotiations because the threat of strike becomes a lot more serious if you can't keep operating with replacement workers. That's right. I think that the whole idea here is to strengthen bargaining relationships. And, you know, the uh, idea behind it, I think, is to uh, have a better relationship between labor and management, it, it provides an opportunity for unions to be able to negotiate successfully with management, focus on bargaining, and I think the use of replacement workers uh, has been a distraction to that. So and I guess what, what I'm hearing is because this threat is more serious, the strikes will, everybody involved will work harder to avert a strike. Is that right? Because what I, I think most people would agree, uh, except when they're in the middle of this dispute, dispute themselves, these strikes can be super disruptive, bad for business, bad for human beings. So basically is the idea here that we'll avoid them and everybody will do better at negotiating? Yeah, I mean, I think the idea clearly is that focus on building relationships. The use of replacement workers, I think, has been very bad we're poisoning the relationships in the workplace. It exacerbates problems. Sometimes you've got issues around violence. You know, and the hope is by having this in place, although the bill isn't perfect, uh, you know, it will uh, allow the opportunity to strengthen uh, bargaining relationships. 
I'm curious whether you think the power that seems to have shifted in favor of labor, thanks in part to tight labor markets, but also some kind of pro-labor laws that have been passed, uh, both provincially and federally, will that change as the employment picture weakens? We do have, uh, you know, unemployment data. Jobs are, are still being made, but not fast enough to keep that unemployment rate from ticking higher, Ravi. So will we see that sh the power shift go back to the employer from the worker? As the labor market uh, becomes tighter, I think that you will see uh, more negotiations. And I, I think that the uh, power uh, will go back, uh, you know, to possibly unions as you have a tighter labor market. But one of the problems people need to understand is that many, many Canadians are not uh, organized. They're not, mm. most Canadians are not members of unions. So I think it's a little bit up in the air what would happen in the non-union sector. But I would expect if labor markets become tighter, then you would have uh, more power uh, for unions. Right. But that's all seeing the big picture, you know, that, that most Canadians are not in a union. So only about 20 seconds here, but what, what happens for unionized workers, does that help non-unionized workers? Is there a spillover effect? I think that clearly there is, that if you look at uh, when you have landmark collective agreements, mm -hmm. I think it's going to change the labor market, and it should have spill-on effects, you know, into other uh, parts of the economy. Ravi, so good to have you with us. Appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for having me. Ravi Malhotra is a professor of law at the University of Ottawa. Coming up, the only way to increase individual prosperity is to grow the economy. So what are the best ways to do that? Stay with us.